Hey guys and welcome to the Airflow channel. My name is Ross and this is the very first video in our freelance course about Adobe Photoshop. I have more than 12 years of experience in this software, so I'm gonna do my best trying to explain to you how to work in Photoshop in the most simple and efficient way. So without further ado, let's get started and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out any new content. Let's go. I think that you already know what Photoshop is used for, but I would like to clarify it one more time, because a lot of confusions might appear in future. You need to use Photoshop whenever you want to edit a photo or, to be more precise, a raster graphics image. What is raster graphics? Raster graphics is a type of graphic that is created from tiny little squares named pixels. Those pixels are lighting up with the three main colors, red, green, and blue, RGB, I think you know it, and in different proportions, so you can have 16.7 million of different colors just from those three colors. And that's the main idea of raster image. So you have square-based image, a lot of tiny squares in different colors combined, and now you have an image. If you want to edit photo, if you want to create a posture, if you want to do basically anything for this type of stuff, you need to use Photoshop. But there is one more type of graphics, which is vector-based graphics. This is a quite complicated one because it's not created from squares, it's created from Bezier curves, which is a more complicated way to create an image because it is scalable. With Vector graphics, you can scale your image into any size, basically, and you will never, ever lose quality. While in Photoshop, in raster graphics, whenever you scale an image, making it larger or smaller, you're gonna lose quality of your image. So whenever you want to create a more simple but scalable images, you need to go with Vector graphics, which is Illustrator. And if you want to create a high detailed images, you need to go with raster graphics, Photoshop. Now let's begin with the software itself. The very first question you might have is where to download Photoshop, and this is quite easy, go to adobe.com, and here you have Photoshop. There are a couple of different bundles, because Adobe software is subscription-based, so you need to pay each month in order to use this software, and they have a lot of different combinations of software. If you want to use only Photoshop, go and download Photoshop, you have a free trial, as I remember, it's 7 days. If you want to have a full bundle, which I do, just go and grab a bundle, it's a good idea if you want to use Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects and all that kind of stuff. So here you go, if you want to download it, go to adobe.com. Any other sources, I cannot recommend them. So now let's start from Photoshop. Whenever you open Photoshop, you will see an empty document and probably it's gonna look like this. I have a lot of different stuff, <laughs> don't look at this because it's always, it's always a mess. And you'll see it in the next way. You'll have a menu bar, you'll have a couple of menus, pop-up windows, your recently opened documents, and this is gonna be empty for you because you just installed the software. So let's start one by one learning what you need to do in this section. First of all, you need to understand that the primary section is located on the left side, which is new file and open file. With new file, you can create new file. Wow, that's incredible. With open, you can open existing ones, which you'll never use because you can just double click and open in Photoshop. So this button is quite useless to me. Also, we have home page. We are right now in the home page, so you can see pre-existing templates. They are always changing layout uh, of those blocks on the top because they have some news on the software, they have some tutorials, and maybe in a month or two you'll see something different over here. But usually it's just information or quick process to create some documents. I am never using those because I don't need to. The main section for you is recent page, and you can see a lot of different stuff over here. It's your recent open documents, you can sort them by status, like recent documents, name, size, type, order of them, you can filter them, you can change view from uh, your uh, grids to table view, basically I'm never using it, but you can. 
And the next section is Learn Page. Learn Page might be very useful to you if you're just starting out in Photoshop because they have quite a few tutorials and some of them are in-app, which means you'll have a new document in Photoshop and Photoshop is gonna guide you through different applications, scenario usages, different tools. And based on my experience with After Effects, they have quite a few great tutorials there. So I hope a level of tutorials here is the same, but at least you can try and see if you like them or not. It's never a good idea to try it out here. Also, you can check more tutorials. In that way, you'll have additional sections. Some of them are open in browser, so you can follow step-by-step -step tutorials from browser, but that's not so interesting. Also, you have your files section. This section is your cloud saved documents. I think that this is quite a weird naming for this part because it might mislead you. So this section is gonna appear only if you are using official Adobe Photoshop and if you previously saved anything to Adobe Creative Cloud. In that way, you can access those files from any other uh, source, for example, from your laptop, from your iPhone, from basically any device that you have with access to Adobe Creative Cloud, you can go there and open your project. This one is quite useful, and I keep some of my projects there for quick access, for backup, but I do not trust them, so... Mostly I keep them on device and then I sync them with my NAS drive and that's easier and faster for me. So this is just a backup. Also, you can see shared with you. I don't have anything because this account is not connected with the team. But if you have a team of designers or your colleagues, you can have access to shared documents with you. Also, a new feature is templates. Adobe has Adobe Express and it's there quite new product, which is online editor. So if you want to do some quick um, uh, quick edits with your photos, videos, with uh, vector files, you can go there. It's like a Canva, but from Adobe. And now they launch templates. So you can grab template from Adobe Express and you can use it in Photoshop. If you like it, you can use it. I'm probably not going to use it at all. So that's not for me. Also, you can see Lightroom Photos, which is a direct connection with Lightroom. I'm not using it so often, that's not my type of job, so I don't have anything there. And deleted. Please be informed that this section, deleted, is for your cloud project. So if you're going to delete your project from your uh, hard drive, from your computer, it's not going to appear here. It's going to be deleted forever, so you'll never ever find it here. You'll find your deleted files if they were previously in your file section in Creative Cloud. And then if you delete them, you can find them in deleted section. That's it. Okay, let's create new documents so you can see how it works. Press new file over here. And now you can see a new pop-up window with new document section. This one is quite simple, but at the beginning it might be a bit complicated. So let me guide you through this page. On the left side, you might see your recent open documents, uh, which might be empty because that's your first time. If you don't have any of those templates, simply switch to any of those presets on the top, for example, photo. And whenever you click on those presets, you'll have a preset it up uh, parameters for the document. Now, let me clarify one thing. You'll never ever use this section. You'll skip print section or illustration, those are not for you because you will set up your document on the way manually. You will never use those presets. I don't even know why they keep creating them because usually they're not so common to use because it's easier and faster for you to type your settings with the width and height and that's it. So simply click on any preset and now let's go step by step. First section is your name of the document and please make sure that you name your document every single time because at the beginning it's gonna create untitled one document which is okay but if you have one more project named untitled one as a result you might override your previous project 
and as a result you will lose it so please make sure that you you have some unique name every single time for example lesson one for this lesson now let me explain to you how this width and height works in photoshop at the beginning you need to make sure that you work in pixels because most of the time we are gonna work for web usage for uh, instagram for social media for youtube doesn't matter in that way you need to have pixels because every device is using pixels to display the content and that's the main way how we are gonna work with photoshop if you have something that is going to be printed for example visit card or a poster you can go and choose inches millimeters doesn't matter it's up to your system of measurements probably not picas or points but you got me and here we need to select pixels now after you change this value to pixels you need to make sure that you type width and height this is quite a difficult one for you at the beginning because you don't know what you need to type but the base standard for youtube videos for example is 1920 by 1080 which means if you want to have 16 to 9 aspect ratio for the video for example you're gonna type this ratio this is just standard if you want to create something square based you can go with the 1080 by 1080 or 2048 by 2048 it doesn't matter it's all up to you and you can change you can check those values on the website for the application that you're gonna use for example instagram you can go and google it instagram sites for post for stories doesn't matter and then just type it here now orientation this one let me change it to those values now orientation is just a quick way for you to change aspect ratio like you want to have your uh document horizontal or vertically that's it and also you can see artboards artboards is the way for you to have multiple images multiple like uh, pieces of paper on your application so you can work on them separately mostly it's used for uh, print process for example you have visit card you have front page and rear page also it can be used for web development you have your main screen you have your mobile phone screen etc so those artboards are only for those scenarios also you can have some tricks like having different aspect ratios combined with smart objects so you can edit one object it's going to be updated across all different artboards but this one is very complicated for you we'll discuss it later for now just turn it off and that's it now resolution this one doesn't matter at all you can have one you can have 72 300 it doesn't matter at all because this is gonna affect your uh print resolution if you're gonna have 72 it's gonna be lower quality lower density if you're gonna have 300 that's the best you can have from print source so just keep it any any value that's it now color mode here please make sure that you have rgb we have bitmap grayscale rgb cmyk and lab out of all those color modes you need to use only rgb for most scenarios let me clarify why you might need each of them just in a quick way so you don't blindly follow my orders so you at least know something about each mode so bitmap is just black and white if you want to have just black and white images without like scales of grade that's it only black and white grayscale it's from 0 to 255 which is zero where you have for example black or white and you have a uh, gradient from those uh, between in between of those colors rgb is the main system the main color mode uh, in which we have 16.7 million of colors so we have plenty of colors to work with cmyk is the mode for print if you ever need to print something you need to switch to cmyk you'll have limited amount of colors and yes colors there is a problem because they are really limited and if you want to print something cmyk now the lab one is quite a difficult one because i cannot explain it in the very fast way it's a very complicated way of combining lightness with two color channels so you can adjust lightness and then you can work with the colors without affecting lightness so this mostly used for photographers 
for advanced photographers if they want to achieve some specific edits in their documents. Most of the time it's RGB. Now, 8-bit, 16-bit, a 32-bit. 32-bit is too much for almost any use scenario. You might use it maybe for some 3D graphics, for some uh, animations, but most of the time it's gonna be 8-bit because our social media pages, everything in social media is working with 8-bit. 16-bit is for you, so you can have a simpler way of editing colors because what this setting does, it allows you to have way, way more colors. 8-bit is okay for social media, but if you want to have very precise editing process of colors, if you have a very cool camera that can capture 14, 12-bit, 16-bit, then you can have this one, but at the end, whenever you export it to JPEG and upload it to social media, it's gonna compress everything into 8 bit so for our purposes let's stick with 8-bit now background contents this is just a background color keep it white and change it that's it we can change it anytime now under advanced options section you'll see color profile this is very very important because if you have wrong color profile your images after export and uploading them to social media might look very off for example, if you want to create an image for your social media for Instagram and you created your image with Adobe RGB or Apple RGB, you might see perfect colors on your Photoshop project. You might see perfect colors on the export JPEG file, but whenever you upload it to Instagram, it's going to look muted with off colors. And that's the problem with uh, color profile because social media they work with srgb you can check srgb iec 61966-2.1 that's what you need to choose you might see working rgb ignore this one whenever you have active uh, color profile is gonna apply working to this one so please make sure that you have srgb that's it now, pixel aspect ratio, keep it square pixels and click create. And guys, I think that's it for this video because it's already quite long. I hope you find it useful. And if you did, please consider hitting the like button, subscribe to the channel and press ring notification bell so you don't ever, ever miss new content on our channel. It was Ross, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.